So every time you have a cabbage, you have an x-ray? Yeah. These are Japan's radiation refugees. Thousands who are now living in cardboard shelters, sleeping on the floors of public buildings with few possessions and little privacy, and facing a future that doesn't seem to offer much more. When you look at this, I mean, I do feel like I'm looking into, through someone's window. <laughs> People have gone to a lot of effort, haven't they, to mm -hmm. try and make a cardboard box home. Into their home. Yeah, I'm really surprised some of the photographs and even the windows all drawn and, and bookshelves all built up and everything. Many Japanese people like Chia Matsumoto fear their country will never fully recover. Do you think you'll ever be able to take food, water, the air you breathe for granted again? Uh, knowingly? No, I don't think so. I just have to believe that that's safe to eat or drink. But somewhere in my mind, I'm sure I know and I always suspect or I always doubt. Is this, I have to ask myself, is this okay? Or if I do this, is it going to show in my health in a few years' time? As I already do. Radiation is such a concern for the people of Japan. It is completely invisible and is now being found all over. It will not be long till the serious human costs become apparent and it will be made worse by the reluctance of the Japanese authorities to take the kind of measures needed in this situation. Inadequate exclusion zones hot spots in Tokyo and the fact the plant is still releasing massive quantities of radiation into the environment. I'll leave you with Chris Busby giving insight into what can be done to help with the radiation and also explaining his new foundation to help in the fight against the radiation and the cover-up. The Fukushima catastrophe is probably the worst nuclear disaster in, in human history. It's certainly worse than Chernobyl. The contamination from Fukushima has gone as far south as Tokyo. Uh, I have measured it personally in air filters from cars. At least 12 different air filters from cars were sent to me, some of them from the south of Tokyo, and many of them from 100 kilometers away from Fukushima. And they contain very large amounts of radioactivity in them, high, 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 high levels of cesium-134 and cesium-137. So we can conclude without any doubt that that area up to 200 kilometers, maybe more, away from the catastrophe, catastrophe site has been seriously contaminated with radionuclides. Now, if the cars are breathing this material, then so are the people, and so are the children. And so the children will be contaminated with radioactivity. We've recently heard that the Japanese government have been doing whole body counting, that is to say they've been putting some people inside a, a monitor to see how much cesium is inside them. And apparently the levels of cesium are sufficient for them to say that there's no problem, that there are not going to be any increases in ill health. At the same time we hear, I hear, reports from Japan, from mothers of children who say that they're showing all of the signs of contamination with cesium that were also found by my colleague Professor Yuri Bandashevsky after Chernobyl in the areas of Belarus that were contaminated similarly with this substance, cesium-137. What it did there was that it went into the heart muscle and it caused conduction difficulties and destroyed hard heart muscle. So the children in, in, uh, in Belarus were suffering heart attacks and arrhythmias. That's when the heart doesn't beat properly. And of course, later on in life, they die young from heart disease because the heart cells don't replicate themselves. The heart cells, you get all of your heart cells at once. You get maybe 1% uh, increase in heart cells per year. But over the period of time we're talking about, there's going to be no replacement for the cells that were damaged by the Fukushima catastrophe in the children. So we have two different points of view here. We have the point of view of the Japanese government, who are ignoring it, who are making these superficial measurements of cesium in the, in, in, in the whole bodies of the children and the people, and are saying that these concentrations are not sufficient to, to cause any, 
any problems. Well, of course, this is an argument that's going on and on. It's like a tennis match, goes backwards and forwards. You know, the, the, the independent scientists say there's a problem, and the government and the nuclear scientists say there's no problem. Of course, the real problem is that we have to do something about it. I mean, I, I'm a father. I, I have seven children. I have 11 grandchildren. And I can't sit back and just let this go on with us in some sort of silly tennis match between us and the pro-nuclear scientists who are trying to save the industry from collapse. Uh, and all the time the children are getting more and more sick and, and, they're, and, and they're building up this level of radioactive damage which will result in them getting sick and dying with cancer, heart disease, whole range of of, Ill, of illnesses that were all discovered after Chernobyl. And it's not as if this is something new. We know what's going to happen. We absolutely know what's going to happen. We have looked very closely at the health effects of people who were exposed to the same radionuclides after the Chernobyl accident in the same quantities. Not as many people, I have to say, which is why Fukushima is a worse disaster. So I decided we had to do something, and I contacted, or I was contacted by some people in Japan who said, what can we do? So instead of just moaning about it, we decided to do something. Now, there are actually some things that we can do. The first thing we can do is we can actually measure the radionuclides ourselves, because, frankly, we do not believe what the Japanese government is coming out with. We don't think that they're right. I mean, I've measured more radioactivity in a car air filter than they are measuring in a child. And the car breathes air in the same way as the child breathes air, so I don't really believe what they're saying. That's the first point. So we need to have independent testing. And secondly, we need to try and do something about these children who are being contaminated. There are two things we can do. The first thing is we can take them away from the areas of contamination and put them somewhere where it's reasonably safe. But that, re that, that leads us to another problem, because what's happening now, as I'm told, is that the Japanese government are trucking radioactive material from the Fukushima disaster area, where it's contaminated, all over Japan. And even as far south as the south of Japan, we're now getting reports of, of uh, radioactivity, uh, radioactive material being taken all the way to the south of Japan to be burnt. Now, what possible reason could there be for burning it as far away as that? I'll tell you the reason. It's really quite sinister and horrifying. The reason is this, that eventually, when these children start to die from leukemia, from other cancers, from heart disease, from whatever, their parents are going to want to go into court. They're going to want to sue the Japanese government and they're going to want to have to say, these, in order to do that, these children were contaminated, and that's why they've got high levels of cancer. But of course, the only way that they can say that they've got high levels of cancer is to have a control group in an area that's not contaminated. For example, the south of Japan. So I believe that the project to take this material and burn it all over Japan is to destroy all of Japan, is to increase the, the, the cancer rate in the whole of Japan so that there will be no control group to which you can compare these children in the Fukushima area. So that's that point. So we want to take the children away anyway into some safe area. That's, that's, the, that, that's what we want to do. But the second thing that we can do, and this is also quite important, is we can try and block the material. We can try and block the absorption of the cesium and the absorption of the strontium-90 and the plutonium and the other substances that are not being measured, incidentally. We have to wait a minute now because there's a train passing. I'm sitting on a children's playground here in um, Sweden. This is in Stockholm. And I decided to talk to you from here, from Stockholm, where there is a significant amount of radioactivity as well, I have to say, in the, in the Baltic Sea. I measured this myself, but that's another question. So the second thing we can do is we can try and block the ingress of the radioactivity into the child's body. Now we know that we can do this with iodine because iodine goes to the thyroid gland. We give them stable iodine, or at least we're supposed to. It turns out the Japanese government didn't. Um, and then it stops the bad iodine, the radioactive iodine, from binding to the same sites. And this, you can do the same thing with the other radionuclides. For uranium and plutonium and strontium-90, which are the most serious, and all of which they're not measuring, incidentally, and none of which can be measured with a whole body counter because they're alpha emitters or beta emitters, we can block their attachment to the DNA by giving large amounts of calcium and magnesium, which binds to the DNA and keeps the, the, the strontium and the uranium off the DNA. So that's one thing that these children can do. They can take a tablet every day 
of stable calcium. And so we are going to produce tablets which contain stable calcium, which we, which we will supply cheaply at the cost of production to parents of these children so that they can take these tablets and block the in ingress of, of these substances. And we're also working on another tablet which will block the ingress of cesium-137. Now in order to do this, we have set up a, an organization in Japan called the Christopher Busby Foundation for the Children of Fukushima. And it has a website and it's all in Japanese and it's all being done by a colleague of mine who contacted me from Japan called James, called James Grand. Uh, in addition to this, we are going to purchase a large number of highly sophisticated radiation measuring devices uh, from Europe, from suppliers in Europe and, and suppliers in the Ukraine. And we're going to make these um, devices available to the parents of children to measure the concentrations of these substances in the food and also to supermarkets and we will measure the substances ourselves. We will set up a laboratory in, 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 in Japan so that people can bring these substances to the laboratory and find out the truth about the concentration of radionuclides in these substances. So these are the things that we want to do and we want you to help us to do this in any way that you can. This is an operation to save the children of Fukushima because we do not believe that the Japanese government is doing anything to save the children of Fukushima. They are operating on a principle which is the principle of saving not the children of Fukushima but the international nuclear industry. And this is disgraceful. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching the video. Please comment, rate and subscribe.